Hello and welcome, Steve. We're glad to have you here at GDC Europe. At Thanks. The My pleasure. So um, your first panel at GDC Europe deals with how to bring your game to tw 2 million DAOs within a week of launch. Yeah, it's essentially a post-mortem on our game Social City. Okay. So how important are the first weeks for social games? Is it a quick start important or steady improvement the key to success? Uh, you can certainly go either way, but I think things are trending toward games really rising more quickly and falling more quickly. I think the whole life cycle of games okay. on the platform are getting more and more compressed. And do you think, will that stay this way or will there be change in the future? Uh, well, I think if there's one been one constant in social gaming is that there's no constant in social gaming. <laughs> okay, that's good, I remember that. So, can you still tell us what are current trends? Are there certain playstyles that are in right now or features, themes? Uh, well, in fact, that's my the subject of my talk tomorrow. Ah, okay. Uh, is uh, Eric and Todd, Eric, sorry, Eric, Todd, and I are talking about the year in social gaming, mm -hmm. and basically we identified twelve trends okay. in social gaming, and we're going to be going through those and and showing games that illustrate those trends. Okay. Uh, I could mention a, a couple of them. Uh, for example, um, the rise in more hardcore games mm -hmm. on Facebook. Uh, after you know a time when early in the platform, pretty much all the successful games were very very casual, and um, another trend uh, would be uh, rising production values in games. That you know sort of the bar for um, not just you know sort of the the cost uh, of making games, but also the length of time it takes to make games and sort of the audience expectation for level of polish. Um, you know, sort of uh, level of stability, um, basically just in order to meet the, the bar of public perception, you know, it's, it's getting harder and harder mm -hmm. to compete, and so you've got to work harder and longer to do that. Do newcomers still have a chance at all, or do you need a big name to be popular? It's, it's definitely a much less welcoming environment mm -hmm. for a startup company or for a small company right now. Um, and I'd say, you know, that there's still uh, opportunities for getting in. Um, probably you're not going to get in kind of competing head-to-head -head with the big established companies, but there's, I think, plenty of territory that's not being covered currently by the big established companies and competing there. Um, I'd say maybe a year ago or six months ago, that might have been doing something like doing hardcore games um, when they were still very new to the platform. You know, now that area has gotten um, a lot more competitive, but I'd say try to identify other niches like that okay, so that aren't being served. So, for example, right now, are many social games are simply copying each other. Yes, I think there's yes. not much and so innovative. I think, I think it, you know, being innovative okay. um, rather than trying to compete in you know the more crowded corners of social gaming so that is the way from. for a new company Okay. to try to break in even if they don't have a ton of resources. So you think we will see more innovative concepts in the future? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I like the idea of social gaming very much, but right now I'm not hooked yet. So. Well, I think, you know, probably the biggest area that's right for innovation is making social games more social. Yeah. And the use of the social graph so far has been um, really not advancing at all. It's been minimal and, and no one has really even been doing too much experimentation in other ways to use a social graph. And um, and it's definitely challenging to do anything, you know, that's new and where you're not sort of following an existing roadmap. But um, but it's also those sort of um, leaps that make, you know, the super hits of the future. Yeah. Okay, we're looking forward to one of them <laughs> probably. So um, one last question. Um, if the gods of gaming granted you a wish to do whatever game you like, like Technology, everything would work out. What kind of game would you make? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, That's a difficult one. It is, it is. Um, I mean, there's there's really sort of no one thing in my mind. I mean, I've got, over the years, you know, there have been any number of dozens of ideas that I've tried to get off the ground. Um, you know, like for example, I, I've been a big fan of the Titanic going back mm -hmm. years before, you know, the Cameron movie. And you know, almost did a Titanic game when I was at Infocom, and then almost did one again when I was at Bafo. And you know, it's just like crazy all the you know publishers who 
who told me, oh, nobody's interested in the okay. Titanic. <laughs> and then, of course, the movie comes out and it's the biggest hit ever. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I've got, you know, just, I don't know, I couldn't even count, you know, dozens and dozens, maybe even hundreds, you know, of ideas that I've worked on over the years and that haven't gone anywhere. And, you know, some are just, you know, sort of ridiculously moldy now and, okay. you know, would no longer make sense. You know, others, you know, I think, you know, are just as relevant today as, as they might have been when I came up with them. So, um, yeah, you know, be hard to, to pick just one. Okay. So and, um, you know, I mean, it, it never happens anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't know. <laughs> so it might be. So thank you very much. This was very interesting. And okay, I'm looking pleasure. forward to your talk. Um, Thanks. So have a good show here at UC Europe. Okay. Okay. I will. Great. I wasn't planning on it until you said.